Hi, I'm Sosie Bacon and I play Rose Cotter in Smile. It's psychological. I think what it does so well is following this one person's story through their eyes and their point of view. Um, and it's absolutely scary, like all horror movies should be. There's jump scares. It was really hard for me to like figure out what, because you know, the lead is always the one that you have the most information about, but also at the same time, like the least. Um, and so it was tough and I, you know, I tried, I, I did everything that I always do, but I don't know that anything can really truly prepare you for an experience like that, which like, with like such heightened emotion for such a sustained amount of time. Not knowing what is your reality and what's everybody else's reality. I mean, that is everyone's kind of worst fear, isn't it? Like being a person that thinks something that n nobody else thinks and trying to convince people of it. Hell. <laughs> it's a fun horror ride. It's also a really intense horror ride. It looks really beautiful and cool and different and like visually, I think people will just get really into it. Particularly if you're kind of a movie buff or a horror buff, once you get on a movie set, most of the time things just start going away because you don't have time. Everything takes longer than you think it is. And like, amazingly, he wouldn't, he didn't cut shots and stuff like that. And like, that's the reason why the movie looks like that because, you know, he fought for those shots um, and he fought for those moments and fought to take the time with the private moments. When you see something that is absolutely the opposite of what it normally is, like a smile being absolutely deranged and terrifying, it sticks with you. Like it, it sticks with you past when you leave. I think that people are constantly going through life kind of covering up emotional pain with social niceties in life and um, kind of that's a perfect description for like maybe what Rose has been doing up into this point and what she like finds she cannot do anymore. The dead eyes, for sure the dead eyes. Everybody kind of had that in spades, like knew that that was it. I don't know what makes it, I, I don't know if that much is different about it. I mean a smile just based on context and who the person is and whether or not they're being real and authentic or they're faking or I think that smiles are always about context. The pain chart in, in the movie is a brilliant idea and it worked brilliantly. It shows up kind of everywhere and it's so iconic but like you never think about it. The more time I've gotten away from it, the more I really like started to love it because it's mostly that scale that you see in every doctor's office is like for kids because they couldn't, you know, speak about their pain the way that adults could. What I was thinking in the scene was like, this scale could never tell me, like I'm so off the charts of how much pain I'm in right now, like emotionally that like, you don't have a scale for that. You know what I mean? My name is Kyle Gallner and I play Joel. The car films I've made, um, a handful of them. Um, I, I I think it's a great genre. I think it's I think nowadays outside of like the superhero genre, it's kind of one of the only sort of surefire things. I mean, there's such a there's such a a fan base for you know for horror films, and they really back them and support them and love them, and um, it's a really it's a really cool community, the the horror community. Well, I think what's kind of cool about it is it basically it's like a 90 minute long panic attack. You know what I mean? Like you don't know where it's coming from, where you don't know if you're dreaming or if you've fallen asleep or or whatever. And I think you know having something you can't escape, you know, and not knowing where it's coming from. I mean, I think a you're gonna have your character, you're gonna have Rose, who's dealing with that, and you, the audience is genuinely going along with her. The, the audience doesn't know it's real or not either. Like, there's no hat tipped to give anything away. So when she experiences something, you're really experiencing it for the first time with her as well. Um, and I think that's a really cool way to, to go through um, the film. And I think it'll make it much more unnerving and, and, and you know, I think it'll make it genuinely scary for a lot of people. She has been um, amazing. She is legitimately like everything you want out of a co-star. She's everything you want out of a number one on the call sheet. She um, works incredibly hard. Um, I mean, she's being put through the 
ringer on this movie. This is a hard, hard movie, and she brings it every single day. Um, and she's just an incredibly talented actress, and she's very kind, and, like, we've gotten to, you know, become pretty friendly. Like, we've gotten, like, I consider her a buddy now. Parker's a very clear vision of what he he wants. He's got a, he's, there's a lot of really interesting shots and, like, crane moves, and the movie kind of always feels like it's moving. Like, there's no real stagnant moment, at least from, you know, the stuff that I've, I've done, and, and, and just, Visually, the way he's doing things, I think he's he's making a really good-looking movie. I think audiences can expect to be scared. <laughs> I think it's genuinely a scary film. I think it's just that fear of not being able to trust your own senses or your own grasp on reality. I think scary movies are one genre that really works well in the theater. I think. I think the collective consciousness in the theater, the group experience is a one of a kind thing. I especially believe that when it comes to films like horror movies, I think there's nothing more fun than being scared in a group of, you know, 200 people, everybody holds their breath at the same time or everybody, you know, jumps at the same time. So I think, you know, seeing a movie in the theaters, seeing a movie like this in the theaters would be a lot of fun. I don't like, um, like gore and horror and like, fear for fear's sake, but I do like when there are complicated themes that te that just happen to be scary. Like, I think I, li I like horror if it's like linked to some kind of human element, like you can actually watch it and you feel moved by it as well, which is why I think this movie is, uh, is gonna be beloved because it's about something that we're all afraid of, which is just um, being trapped in your own uh, body and brain, <laughs> which I think I feel all the time. <laughs> I. I'm sure that the the vision and the goal was to to make something that would become something else. I think that's always the way. Uh, my agent certainly hoped it would become a feature film. I definitely did too. Um, but I think this is the way with um, with any sort of like creative pursuit now. It's a lot harder to get people to believe in an idea. It's a lot easier to get them to believe in an actual like tangible thing. And um, the the short was so well made and so well produced and so um, it was very lavish for a short film, honestly. So it felt like it was definitely always going to become something else. So she's lovely. She's, uh, it, it's so hard to be um, on a horror set sometimes because like it, it's a very like emotionally and physically taxing experience. You have to envision your death, the death of everyone you love, the, you know, you physically have to like, um, throw yourself around or be thrown around, but she's been incredibly warm. She's really polite. She's very energetic. I'm, I'm very impressed with like, just, you know, what a good attitude she has so late into shooting as well. And she still has a lot of energy for it. And um, the short time we got to work together was, was really enjoyable. The smile was developed just by me, like looking at myself in the mirror and smiling until I freaked myself out. And Parker has like very specific ideas about what he wants. So it was, it was just like a matter of degrees, like tilt your head forward a bit, smile without your eyes. I think, you know, when I smile, like my whole face lifts up and my eyes kind of disappear into my cheeks. And when Laura's smiling, her eyes are wide and unblinking. And there is just a cruelty in it. There's a, there's a chaotic evil, uh, like totally humanless feeling about it. It's a really fun role for me because I'm playing somebody who is like, at least appears that they are not in their right mind. And you know, a lot of the films that I do, a lot of the jobs that you do as an actor, especially a female presenting one, you really have to or at least someone has to care about how beautiful you are, what you look like, and this is the first job I've had in a long time where none of that was really, um, none of that was really an element of it. It was just, you're desperate and you need help and you're gonna die. <laughs> and what, what does someone do in those circumstances? And I think, uh, Parker really just, he, he's a film buff. 
Like, he's seen more movies than anybody I know and has very specific, like, um, opinions about them and has very, like, a very well-honed taste, I think, when it comes to, like, his, his visual language. I think that this is an incredibly relatable film because there are a lot of questions that go unanswered, which is just, you know, that's life, baby. And it's something that I think we can all imagine ourselves experiencing in some form or another. And by the end of the film, I don't think you really ever truly know whether or not this is an outside force or an internal force. I think horror is a really great vehicle to tell really interesting stories about people like any film genre is. Horror just also happens to like, you know, hit at the heart of um, our biggest fears. And this film is, is a great example of that. I'm Jesse T. Usher, I'm playing Trevor. Reading the script is an experience, you know? Uh, Parker kind of wrote it in a way that you get to visualize and you can kind of see and hear and feel a lot of the things that these characters are seeing, hearing and feeling in the moment. And it's, it's all kind of there on the page. So, it, you know, it's like reading a book almost. He's very elaborative with the shots and like what energy that's gonna create and you know, how something is gonna feel when you get right next to the person. And you know, that's all, it's all there in black and white. So it's really interesting. I feel like everyone has those moments where your dreams feel a little too real and it makes you uncomfortable. And it makes sense when I watch Rose go through the things that she's going through because when you're unsure, the way that that feels in your body and like, you know, I feel like Sozie's doing such a great job of bringing that to life and like recreating that feeling. And that's something that I look for, especially in this, in this genre. It needed that collaborative uh, spirit for myself because now I'm able to explore areas, uh, you know, in, in a, in, in a situation that I've never been in before. Um, I only know how I think I would react, but coming from where Jesse's comes from, you know what I'm saying? But when I, when I think about Trevor and where he's coming from, but also where he's going, where he's at at this exact moment, speaking to Parker is how I, I'm able to understand that moment. So uh, that's what those conversations were. You know, we were just figuring out exactly where Trevor is. Sosie, super committed super committed and I feel like I feel like she is able to find moments with Rose as Rose is feeling them in the movie and I love to watch it I love to watch it like come together you know her process is very it's not like my own where I feel like I feel things early on and then have to find them again. Whereas, you know, with her, I, I can almost watch her in rehearsals realize things as Rose. And it's really interesting. And I just feel like she has a lot of range where she's able to like keep tunnel vision. To, to she, She's able to see the end goal no matter which route we're taking. And I, I love that about her. We did like a little rehearsal read through before we even started filming. So we had a lot of conversations. Then, you know, we went and sat and like had dinner and, and you know, there was um, a couple other people that came and we just talked about the script and like the characters and our, our own perspectives. And then we sort of pieced a lot of things together from different perspectives. Cause I'm, I'm focusing on Trevor. So, you know, I'm obviously breaking down the script as Trevor. So it's, it was really nice to hear Jillian give her part you know what I mean? And, and say like, well, this is kind of how it feels in her world. And I'm, and I'm for the first time thinking like, oh, you're absolutely right. That's totally different than what I was expecting, but it's gonna be nice to see them come together. So there was a lot of that. Name's Rob Morgan playing Roscoe Talley. Parker and I just spoke. Um, I pretty much explained to him what I perceived the character to be, the placement of the character in the script and things of that nature. Uh, he seemed to enjoy uh, my my perspective about it, and um, you know now we're looking forward to go on set and and work together in harmony and and see what we we, we come out with. I think we're gonna uh, put a a good spin on the horror genre and revitalize some aspects of the horror movie genre, and uh, I'm excited to be here for it. Well, Roscoe uh, is smack dab in the middle. Um, 
he is the only person to have figured out how to break the chain. Um, what I found interesting about Roscoe while reading the script is that he's essentially the freest person in the whole script, but yet he's shackled in chains in jail. So, you know, you have that juxtaposition of what the character is experiencing and the metaphoric energy he brings to the, the, the story. So I found that to be very interesting, some things to kind of play on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's very interesting to see his placement in the story, uh, the information that he brings to the story, and then to see the circumstances that he's in. I found that to be very, very, very interesting. I'm Jillian Zinzer and I play Holly. It's really hard to make a script that stands out in the genre. And I think what Parker's done so beautifully is he wrote he wrote a really grounded script, but the the camera itself was woven into the script in a way that really stood out as its own character. You know, grabbing from like I think he's inspired a lot um, by 70s horror art house films, and, and I really appreciated the way he kind of elevated the the camera language and like the visual tone of the piece embedded into the script in in a way that felt, I don't know, really refreshing for something so contemporary. I think what's also fun about the script is that every character has its own flavor. It's not just this monochromatic, you know, well-written script. Everyone has their own thing going on. I mean, Holly's probably written <laughs> to be the, like the needed comedic relief. She's so obnoxious. I love playing her, but um, I thought, you know, for she, she was like a really nice, a new color um, to Rose's character, and and he kind of addressed. He was really specific with with every character, kind of bringing a different light and tone and and shade to to the script. Playing Sisters with Sosi is, I mean, the easiest thing. She's so she's so rad, uh, and we clicked right away. So that's been fun and easy. I think more challenging was was playing against the love that I have for Sosi with this with this sister dynamic that exists between Holly and Rose who do not get along and have nothing in common and just go tete a tete, you know, in such frustrating ways more often than not. Sosie and I are just, I mean, we're very much alike and we're very similar. So um, it's been more challenging trying to not like Sosie as much when we're going into Holly and Rose mode. What makes Parker really fun to work with and, and some of what I really liked about our early conversations about this film was that, of course, you know, as an actor, you want to ground your performance and you want to make it believable. And the last thing you want to do is push it into the wrong tone or, uh, you know, have Holly come across as a caricature. But um, it's, it's, really, it's really beautiful to have a trust in a director's vision where I'm just sort of like, do whatever you want, you, know, you, you guide my tone, you push my levels. Um, because ultimately, you know, he has, he has the whole picture in mind and, and we're just flying in as these shades and colors and strokes on his palette. And so uh, it's sort of play a character who kind of comes across a little bit more um, caricature and comedic in a script that's quite grounded, you know, and again, it, next to, Sosi, who's so grounded and natural in her performance. So that's been both challenging, but also really fun and, and kind of like a nice refreshing relief as an actor to just be able to, you know, allow someone to, to guide my levels and to just totally trust them to do what they will with it. Sosi's a beast. Uh, this is such an exhausting role and such an exhausting shoot. And I don't know many actors would weather that with the grace and fortitude that she can. I mean, take after take after take. There go, she can go like zero to 60 in a millisecond and back to back takes. It's just, uh, she's like a powerhouse and it's phenomenal to, to watch and exhausting to watch. Holly is so easy to hate. She's just this narcissistic alpha, um, super controlling, uh, totally oblivious, I mean, she, she's, she's the worst, you know? And then in this moment, you, you understand a bit of why and how these two sisters who have gone on such completely different paths in life, um, why they each made those choices and how both of their choices stemmed from 
uh, the same trauma and what they decided to do with their pain. And Holly decided to, to shut off and shut down and not deal with it and run away and just pretend that, you know, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. Whereas Sosie's character decided to try and work with that pain and, uh, and become, you know, a therapist and help others. So I think that that scene is really special in the way that it, it um, strips both, both sisters of their masks and their layers and their filters. And there's just like the, the one final moment where you see them actually connect or try to and see each other, even if that's not, um, even if it's painful. My name's Kel Penn. I play Dr. Morgan Desai, who's a psychiatrist, um, works with Rose, one of Rose's supervisors, bosses. Um, is kind of caught up in this bizarre thriller. Morgan is not just a witness to the horror, but I think genuinely concerned through each step of the way. It's kind of one of the things I like about playing him is he cares very much for his friendship with Rose, his mentorship with her, and seeing that some something's going off the rails, he's immediately concerned, wants to kind of make it better for her, and then, you know, realizes when it's a little too late exactly what might be going on. First of the screenplay, my, my first reaction was, this, this is pretty crazy. I mean, the... The idea that uh, whatever happens is happening by witnessing something and questioning your own sanity, and then in the case of Rose's character, knowing that you might go insane, and that hasn't happened yet, and the fear that's associated with that was wild. I mean, it, it, it was one of the things that really appealed to me, because I've never... The blurred reality stuff is the stuff that, that I enjoy as a horror movie fan. I'm less about just straight-up gore and more, more in the realm of something that could be possible, or you can at least understand how your mind could think something's possible, even if it's totally far-fetched. The early conversations were just about uh, about how everything unravels in the story and who these people are, what the, what, what the subtext of the story is that he he's actually trying to tell, and, and what makes the characters so unique, and those were the things, those were actually the questions that I had for him among the whole list, and we started our conversation on Zoom, and you know, by the time 20 minutes had gone by, he had answered all of those just with his pitch because that's how closely he knew kind of what he wanted to get out of the out of the film. Time you have characters that really jump out at you that you're that you're fascinated by that seem dynamic. Uh, I like to look a at you know who's playing those parts and and what does that look like, but then the direction behind it. I mean, we've all seen films or been part of films where the performances aren't quite up to par and there might be a number of reasons for that, including whether you could or couldn't trust your director. And it seemed like in both talking to him and watching some of his earlier work, it was that perfect storm of casting people who he knew how to bring to life and then having the having the real chops to be able to do it. And it was, again, since I haven't done very much horror, that was something that really appealed to me. What I like about a good script is, is if it draws me in and if I find it to be believable, um, no matter what the circumstances are. So in this case, you know, is my character believably going through his day to day and, and uh, or is it escapist? And not that there's anything wrong with the latter, but in this case, I just thought, I really believe that he's going through all that, which is what makes the psychological component of the thriller that much more bizarre. So she's wonderful and, and very thoughtful and has, has uh, you know, very welcoming. I mean, they've been shooting for about a, a month and a half before I had the chance to dive in. So. Um, it, I think it would be very easy for any actor to just kind of go through the motions of the day to day, but she was incredibly welcoming, talked through all the scenes, you know, offered any, uh, offered to run anything and talk, you know, any advice that she wanted to offer that, I, that we could discuss to make the scene a little bit better. It was really special, which is nice. My name is Robin Weigert and I'm playing Dr. Northcott. I think the thing about this screenplay that grabbed my attention is the, is the, uh, it's sort of two tracks that it's on. It's psychologically sound, even though it's horror. That seemed to give um, some teeth to the film, you know? I, I, it, it, it's definitely, yeah, we're, we're in the world of the paranormal, we're in the world of the supernatural, but it, but it also feels sort of grounded in psychological truth. I do think it is a bit of, na of uh, uh, kind of what we're collectively going through right now is, is a bit in the film, uh, which is to say, uh, the nature of reality itself feels like it's in question right now for many people. Well, uh, many people are, exper are experiencing what, what this protagonist is experiencing on some level, which is to say, feeling paranoid, feeling like people who they thought they knew are not who they thought they were, and those kind of things. It feels actually then very much of this moment. And I think horror in general, um, 
popular forms of horror take hold at times when it is relevant to what's going on socially and in the society. So I guess this movie has a chance of striking a nerve in that way. Dr. Madeline Northcott um, is meant to be a barometer for what the truth is, what, what sanity looks like. Um, and when you introduce a character like that into a world where um, the world itself is insane, <laughs> um, the question of whether she'll end up being a protagonist or an antagonist is very much alive from the, from the, from the moment you meet her because you know what your protagonist is up against and that she's not in a, a situation that somebody who's holding down the fort in terms of this is what reality looks like will necessarily get on board with. So I think that makes a character like this interesting. All I can say about this wonderful actress is that she wasn't sparing herself at all. And she was in a marathon run of days. And I, and I think she's gonna be a terrific lead for this film. I think she was a wonderful choice. I'm impressed with Parker uh, as, a, as a first time director because of his confidence and his clarity. Uh, I think he I'm, clearly has been working on the script and, and planning this for a very, very long time so he knows it inside and out. But it's been interesting to see, you know, take by take, uh, not, not just, you know, with me obviously, but watching how he relates to Sosi and, and I, I, I feel like he's, um, taking good care of his actors, that he's right in there with us, you know, uh, making small but meaningful adjustments. And, um, you know, he, he really seems to know very much what he's doing there um, and has a very clear vision because time is of the essence always on these things, that, you know, what he wants from a shot uh, visually and what he wants uh, it to accomplish for the film. And, and, and so we're able to move along at a, at a nice uh, clip. What's going to grab people about this film is that something in it is going to feel creepily recognizable to people uh, because we're in a in a condition societally I think where we don't really know what's up we don't know what the truth is we don't know if we're being lied to or misled we've been collectively sort of brought to a place where we are deeply deeply distrustful um, and that's the condition that the central character finds herself in. And it's an ever worsening, horrific version of that. But I think that audiences are going to instinctively key in because of it hitting a nerve, uh, a social nerve right now. Smile's a story about a clinical psychiatrist who following a bizarre encounter with a patient begins experiencing these terrifying occurrences that she can't explain and starts to believe that something evil may have come into her life. When I was making this short, I was really intrigued by the, uh, the sense of, you know, when you wake up from a bad dream, um, that feeling of panicky doom that kind of lingers with you. I mean, for several minutes afterwards, even though you've realized it was just a dream, uh, that sense of, of panic kind of lingers with you, and I wanted to try to capture that feeling on screen. And at the same time, I also really wanted to investigate sort of the pairing of something that might be supernatural that might present as something psychological. A horror film is most successful when it works first as a dramatic story. And then when you bring in all of the horror elements, it really elevates it into something else. Film allows you to do really interesting things, with the medium and sort of uh, play on the audience in unexpected and unconventional ways. And specifically for Smile, the further along the film goes, I wanted it to descend into this kind of nightmare logic that really we can't ex like expect where it's going. I was really interested in tapping into the fear of the unknown and unknown evil. And for me, uh, I wanted to explore the frightening things that we carry around with us and what it might feel like to have your mind turned against you. I think that not being believed is a universal fear that we can all relate to. And so the horror in the movie comes from experiencing something frightening, not understanding where it's coming from, and not being believed about it. And I wanted to take all of that stuff and create a film that feels like an escalating nightmare. Sosie Bacon plays Dr. Rose Cotter, a psychiatrist who works at a public hospital. 
And her entire life and career have been shaped by certain events from her childhood. And I wanted to take those events and sort of hang them over the film like a dark cloud. And she's somebody who's made it her life's mission to make sure that anyone who needs help can get it. But in her own personal life, she remains incredibly guarded as a way to sort of protect her own vulnerabilities. And when things start spiraling out of control for Rose, she finds that the tables have turned for her and suddenly she's the one experiencing these impossible things and no one around her is believing anything she's saying and she's going to have to face the things that she fears most if she wants to survive. Sosie came to the film incredibly prepared. Uh, she had created this document that she called Core Knowledge about the character, and leading up to production, we were talking constantly, trading ideas back and forth, and really working on the character together. Um, the degree of difficulty of what she had to take on was enormous. She's not only in almost every scene, but she's operating at these extremely high levels of anxiety and stress and panic. And, you know, that can really take a toll on an actor, but she's incredibly committed to her craft and really knocked it out of the park. And I personally believe that she's given one of the most astounding debut lead performances in recent history. I think you're trying to, first and foremost, uh, tell a great character story. I think that's the most important thing because if we can't invest in the character, then we're not going to be frightened by their plight. So for me, it all really starts there. And once I think that there's a dramatic story that's really working, you start to layer in these moments that have the ability to really strike at the core of the audience and what they might be afraid of. And it's about anticipating what's gonna potentially scare an audience and then finding ways to pull the rug out from underneath them and subvert their expectations. The smiles in our film, the ones you gotta watch out for are the unnervingly wide toothy smiles, but the real key is it's all in the eyes. These dead eyes that are almost like a predator, something that's really threatening you. I chose to use the smile to represent the evil in the film because of the strength of the inherent contradiction. Uh, a smile is meant to be a warm, friendly gesture that is welcoming and inviting. And, you know, it's something that is primal within us. We learn to smile as babies before we even learn to speak. And I wanted to see if I could take that and flip it on its head and turn a smile into a threat, you know, something that feels dangerous and evil, and see if uh, I could use that to really creep audiences out. I think the film is going to surprise audiences while also respecting their intelligence. Um, it's deeply psychological, but it's also shockingly visceral and physical. It's got big frightening moments that are gonna hopefully cause audiences to jump out of their seat and scream, but it also leans into this creeping sense of unease that will slowly burrow its way underneath an audience's skin and hopefully linger with them long after the credits roll. It's gonna scare you, it's gonna shock you, it's gonna make you wanna cover your eyes. It's a mysterious, nightmarish roller coaster of an experience that I think you're gonna wanna talk about with your friends as soon as it's over. And nothing can prepare you for what's gonna happen. Robert Salerno and I am a producer on the film. It was um, a really just kind of the, the uniqueness of uh, uh, Parker's vision and style. He had a very unique way of uh, storytelling and uh, was really impressed with the ability that he had to do it on obviously not a very big budget uh, on a short film. Uh, and so what he was capable of doing in that time and, and uh, getting this emotion and, uh, and energy and thrill and scare within a matter of minutes on a limited budget was really kind of exciting to see what he would have to do with something the size of a feature. This genre of horror is always fun. It's just, it's that keeping you on the edge of your seat and that thrill, that, 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 that energy of, you don't know where it's gonna come from. And then in this film in particular, it's really exciting to watch it because it's, it's a dramatic film that has a, an underlining uh, story and, and meaning. And I think that's just always exciting with the horror for any audience member is to have something that resonates and is real and uh, gives that us that shock of adrenaline. It was just really evident as soon as everybody um, watched 
Sosi and uh, spoke with Sosi and uh, after meeting with her, that she was really the perfect rose for this. You know, her previous work on um, Mayor of Easttown um, and uh, 13 Reasons Why really just showed what a, 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 a performer she is with a lot of, you know, weight and, and gravitas toward her, her performances. And so that was, that was really something that we focused on and wanted to make sure in this film that is a, a horror thriller, it is also very dramatic. And so it's important to have somebody who can, can show that and can, can bring that to light. We need to be sympathetic to this character. And Sosie has that ability. I don't feel that any of this casting really you expect to see in a horror film. So the actors that we've cast, really are, you're, you're expecting them more in a dramatic or something uh, something other than this. So it's it kind of lends to the excitement and energy of it all. Once you see them and it is playing out as a dramatic film and then these elements start happening that really, um, you know, sort of take the audience off guard and uh, gives the scare or the excitement uh, more resonance. Parker's gonna be a great director. He's a, a smart guy who has a really um, clear vision of what he wants. Um, he's very meticulous in how he wants to execute it. It's, um, it's fun to sort of work with somebody like that when they've got this idea um, that they sort of work through and they, they want to they want to uh, establish and they will collaborate. He'll cl collaborate with um, his, his team. And, um, and and bring it bring it all together. I mean, he really loves the um, a lot of the technical aspects and um, the the uh, the detail of what uh, we're doing. He pays great attention to all of that. So it is you know challenging in terms of everyone's got to like be on and and uh, and ready to do it. And it's also exciting to you know watch him evolve. You know, this is his first uh, project and from when where he started to where we're coming to an end um, has been an exciting uh, process as well because he has clearly brought a vision and um, an idea to this film. And it, I think we've all just sort of watched it blossom and uh, his ability to, to tell this story in a, this filmic way um, has come at an at a, at a exciting time to, to watch. It's going to be a must-see because the, the they're going to get a, a amazing performances that are just going to completely keep people engaged and 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 sucked right in. But they're also going to get the the horror and the excitement of of the scare. Um, we've got some brilliant uh, visual effects and uh, and mechanical effects that are going on in this film. My first reaction on reading the screenplay was it, it just it was intense. Um, I, I do love horror. It's not necessarily a genre that you know I'm I'm, I'm like a big buff in. But when I when I when I love it, I love it. And and this script, I, I couldn't put it down. What I did see in it is vision and somebody who has an idea of how to you know really shake the audience. But also, it, it looks like somebody had yeah, it just it looked like it was made by someone with a vision and ambition and had a good sense of like timing and you know, had, knew you had to utilize VFX and yeah, it just felt like there was a, a filmmaker in there that needed to grow and like kind of come out and be able to get another opportunity and I'm glad he did, so. We're with Rose for basically every scene and she goes from one traumatic event to the other, to the next and it just keeps elevating. So it's it was, it was kind of a combination of like being very wide and utilizing the environment, wide lenses, maybe a little bit more depth of field, having her small in frame and then juxtaposing that with being right in there. Usually on a wide lens still, to be sort of heard of, you know, it's this intense, so you still see quite a lot of depth around her and you sort of don't know what's gonna be, you know, um, again, sort of, what's the next step? She's gonna turn it around and then have some other horrific, horrific thing to sort of, you know, be in her face. So I guess that sort of suspense and, um, yeah, we wanted the, the audience just to feel paranoid, I guess, and then I, I'm hoping that the way we shot shot it will kind of portray that and that's generally a combination of being yeah extremely wide with a lot of depth and then also in very close with her on, on white lenses and you know a lot of movement a lot of deliberate kind of um you know we're always lurking around her and um and that type of thing it's about timing it's about edit points and getting the right you know vulnerable sort of shots at the right moments and hiding what you don't want to see with shadow i think that's a big one for me it's so much of that is about i, I kind of like the slow burn sort of stuff not that's that rose is like it, it is it's going to move it definitely is going to move, but 
I think the way the scares and things are set up, it's more about just moving slowly through that and then maybe something will happen quickly, but it's not, it, it's not this like uh, sort of constructed jump scare. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe some of that, I think there, there's, come to think of it, there's a couple in the film, but it wasn't necessarily like this um, really sort of, constructed thing yeah it's more like everything's sort of slow and then bang you've got something that's really freaky she's brilliant like I, I love Sosie it was great working with her um, but for her to bring that energy to set every day and just be jumping in and out of scenes with yeah for all different levels of despair from outright you know an outright breakdown through to just being miserable and depressed it's like it would have been it would have taken its toll like I, she, she did a great job and you know I, I'm you know either on the camera or like looking very closely at the monitor and I'm not seeing I'm seeing consistency there and, and I think that would be so difficult you know to be to be having some panic attack one day and then a week later you've got to pick it up to the next scene and then come in from that and be like okay cool ready to go and and you know the sets everyone's sort of doing their thing everyone's just busy doing their job buzzing around her and you know she's got people doing makeup in the morning and there's people laughing and there's you know it was a very well run ordered set but you know what I mean there's, there's, everyone's got their own stuff to do and just for her to be in that space of like alright well, it, it, I, I really admire what they do this is going to be like terrifying entertaining hope sometimes humorous I think I hope I don't know it, maybe I've got a sick sense of humour but um. <laughs>